That's weird. Juice! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction to tip, Corbin. I am an expert in pH balance. No, he's not. Uh, today we got a yeah, video. It's, it's called When an Indian Historian Lashes Out at the West. Because we've never done anything. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's more, it's, it's kind of similar to oh, um, uh, our, that politician in India. The, yeah. What's his name? I, I probably revisit it, it, my suspicion, and it'll be, we'll be like, amen, brother yeah. or sister, whoever this is. Uh, they'll be saying, you guys in the West have revisionistic history based on your perspective and you completely I'm assuming about that's, what is, that's what it is. We'll yep. see. Let's see. Uh, oh. The United States. Oh, wait, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what this is Go about. Go Boris Johnson on the, on the thumbnail there. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what this is about. He has some terrible hair. Yeah, he likes the Three Stooges, I think. Yeah. <laughs> He's been inspired by Mo. Here we go. Listen to Boris Johnson. Wow. When I listen to people like Joe Biden, when I listen even more to Emmanuel Macron, all Macron. I can think of is how condescending you are. <laughs> Glasgow was the UK's second most important city. Beautiful buildings, beautiful streets, a gorgeous city. When I see cities like this, I think also about the other side of it. You know, there's a phrase from Walter Benjamin, every monument of civilization is also a monument of barbarism. Mm. I think of the famines in Bengal, the jute workers in Bengal sending jute to Dundee through the Glasgow port. I think of human beings from Africa enslaved and brought from Ghana to the New World and all those prophets getting sucked into cities like London and Glasgow. You know, between 1765 and 1938, the British Isles stole 45 trillion dollars a pounds from India. 45 trillion sterling from India. We never got paid for that. When the British left India, when we threw the British out, our literacy rate was 13%. So much for several hundred years of so-called civilization. Meanwhile, our landscapes were destroyed. You know, coal was foisted on India. You foisted coal on us. You were the ones that came and made us coal dependent. And then you left and now you dare to condescend to us. When I listen to Boris Johnson, when I listen Joe Biden, when I listen even more to Emmanuel Macron, all I can think of is how condescending you are. You condescended to us 400 years ago, you condescended to us 300 years ago, you condescended to us 200 years ago, you condescended to us 100 years ago, you're condescending to us today. You only know condescension because for you, colonialism isn't something that happened in the past and we defeated, we defeated you, it's not that. For you, colonialism is a permanent condition and that permanent condition happens in two ways. There's the permanent condition of the colonial mentality. You want to lecture us, you want to tell us that we are responsible for all the problems because you will never accept that you're the one principally to blame. You signed the Rio formula in 1992 on common and differentiated responsibilities. You like the common part. You like the common part. You like to say we're all in this together and so on. We're not in this together. The United States, four or five percent of the world's population still uses 25 percent of the world's resources. You outsource production to China and then you say China is the carbon polluter. China's producing your buckets. China's yeah. producing your nuts and bolts. China's producing your phones. Try to produce it in your own countries and see your carbon emissions rise. You love lecturing us because you have a colonial mentality. Then there are colonial structures and institutions. You lend us money and every time you lend us money, which is our money, which is our money, every time the International Monetary Fund comes to our societies and they tell us, here's the money we are giving you, we are giving you, no, it's our money. You give us our money back as debt and then you lecture us about how we should live. The climate justice movement is a movement that says we're worried about our future. What future? What future children in the African continent, in Asia, in Latin America, they don't have a future, they don't have a present. They're not worried about the future, they're worried about their present. Your slogan is, we're worried about the future. What future? 
That's a middle class bourgeois western slogan you got to be worried about now. 2.7 billion people can't eat now and you're telling people reduce your consumption. How does this sound to a child who hasn't eaten in days? You got to clue into this guys, you got to clue into this otherwise this movement will have no legs in the third world. <laughs> I'm hoping that was uh, more of like a focus on right now as opposed to lecturing on the future um, uh, and not a there's no such thing as climate change because <laughs> it almost sounded a little bit like that like just focus on now with yeah the I'm assuming he's that's what he's talking about like okay there's we can focus on everything right now. The, pro the climate change is here now, happening now. That's what I'm hoping he's referring to. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> a lot of there's more. I have more questions than I do Obviously, thoughts. This is just a snippet. Obviously. Yeah, because this is an edited. It's a snippet itself. It's an edited snippet without much context. Uh, like, I, what's the forum he's sitting in? What is the topic of discussion? Well, I see right here. I so that's why I'm assuming it's uh, what I, what I was saying because it's. For climate justice, okay. Uh, so I'm assuming it's he's for climate, like the, helping to change climate, but he's calling out some of the hypocrisies, right? Like and that, and the, where, like that's the who, what, where, when, and why. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. who's who is who are the people he's talking to right now? Uh, and there's because there's a lot he's saying that is there's just I I feel like I have so many blanks to fill in. Yeah that I don't feel I can give a good assessment in terms of what my thoughts would be on his comments because a lot of what he said was true and yeah. then there's a lot of things he said that I could I could look at as being compartmentalized but how can I say it's compartmentalized when I just got a com compartmentalized clip you yeah. know what I mean it's only a 4 minute clip yeah. obviously I don't know I don't know obviously I'm sure he spoke a lot more and there was probably a whole conversation uh, before this uh, that that obviously Absolutely. we missed but yeah. he did to make some obviously great points <laughs> That, that, well, one, a lot of that one stat about the, the effect that the United States uses 25% of the world's resources and also outsources all of our production almost to India, to, um, to China, and then we lecture them about reducing their carbon emissions. When mm -hmm. we, the reason they probably, not the only reason obviously, but a big reason they have it is because all of our stuff is outsourced to them. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously that is also a product of our capitalism uh, society. And yes, so there's, there's a lot of and and our colonialism yeah, because yeah. our colonialism hasn't gone away; it's just taken yeah. a completely different shape. So he's he's absolutely right in that regard. Yeah. It's hard to give a, a full full. No, answer. and we he said something that I would have liked to have heard him say a lot more on because there's something that uh, most Americans are probably not aware of, and I wasn't until recently, which is the way that we we have reshaped colonialism. It hasn't changed, but the way that our policies, and he mentioned the International Monetary Fund, yeah. that is a big contributor to the expansion of our colonialism, and we do it now with the specificity of going into a country, promising we're gonna do, do infrastructure rebuilding, getting that country indebted to us so that they can't pay back the debt, and therefore we now have leverage against them to do what we want them to do, and they do it because we promised them infrastructure knowing the whole time what we were promising was just so we could gain the control. And most of the time, they've got some resources like oil and natural gas. So I would really like to know and he's absolutely right. We talk a lot about, and we need to, climate change. Yeah. Yet at the same time, there's a whole lot of issues that need to be done. We talk about it like it's something that's coming and not literally. It's here. Present. And we will point a finger at places that, like he said, that need to be better with their carbon emission. Yet we're the number one importer of their materials. So we're actually contributing to it, mm -hmm. but saying you need to change it. Yep. And not offering necessarily any changes to that, but at the same time, this is where I'd like to know more. Yeah, you just doing a pure demonization of the West is not only factually incorrect; mm -hmm. it's argumentatively bad mm -hmm. because all you're looking to do is pick a fight rather than find a solution. Yeah. So, and I'm not accusing him of that in this in any way. Like I said, this is I'd love to I'd love to know more about what yeah. he's talking about. I'm sure, he's and, and for more than four minutes. Yeah. yeah, obviously they cut some of his stuff up here as well. So. I'm, I'm a sh you can't really give a full assessment on it. I liked a lot of his points that he made. Yeah, I did too. Um, and obviously a lot of them were factually accurate. And I'm assuming that, look at what I was saying, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about a for climate justice assembly, not a... Yeah, there's a whole lot more I'd like to know. 
climate change is a hoax thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will say for sure, irrespective of all those holes we don't have and questions I'd like to have, we've talked about this before. I just, last night, Andrani and I were having dinner with somebody who's Indian and asked, how has everything in your mind changed since you've been doing the channel? And I said, the biggest change is I'm no longer indoctrinated the way I was. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm so glad you phrased it exactly that way. I said, yeah, we're indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that anger should be, I feel an anger knowing what we know about India and how many people in the West, us included, have had really bad thoughts because we were indoctrinated, yep. specifically made to think a certain way, not taught truths, specifically made to think a certain way about India and other countries. And I'd be angry too. So yeah. I want to hear more. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let us know other informational videos like this, if uh, any other speeches from um, different kinds of people. Uh, obviously, we always enjoy these kind of things. So yeah. please let us know down below. Just